viewers welcome to my channel IIT JVL Ampiats and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I have brought another interesting problem from Harvard uh, problem of the week, Harvard problem of the week uh, 7 that's regarding a mountain climbing lasso the same problem is also given in the David Moran's mechanics textbook so without much ado let's straight away get into the problem so here's the problem in fact uh, students find this problem quite challenging and that's why I've chosen this one so let me read the problem a mountain climber wishes to climb up a frictionless conical mountain. He wants to do this by throwing a lasso, a rope with a loop over the top and climbing up along the rope. Okay, so this is a mountain and I have one loop. So look carefully at the model of the lasso. So it has got one full loop and then there is another. So there are two pieces of ropes. It's not a single piece of rope. So one ro rope forms complete closed loop and another uh, uh, rope goes around this and it has a small loop like this and then it goes like this and it's a frictionless uh, rope okay so he wants to do this by throwing a rope or a lasso uh, over the top and climbing up along the rope so his lasso will fit around the mountain and then he has to, he can climb along the mountain like this okay assume that the mountain climber is of negligible height so that the rope lies along the mountain as shown so height of the um, uh, object uh, i mean the climber is negligible you can as well think of it as a small uh, i mean massive rock attached to the rope rope is massless okay so that the rope lies along the mountain as shown the lasso is modeled as loop of frictionless rope tied to another piece of rope as shown above for what range of angle alpha is it possible to climb the mountain okay so i hope the question is clear and if you want you can give it a try and otherwise you can straight away have a look at my solution so let me get into the analysis straight away so i'll present you my analysis okay okay so uh, all of you must be aware that when we cut a cone we get a planar figure right so uh, let me cut the mountain so somewhere here there will be a knot let's say p is the point of the knot and suppose i cut this cone along the knot then i'll be able to get a planar sector shaped figure right uh, which uh, forms this cone on, on uh, rolling okay so now uh, my claim is what my claim is that when you open this cone and you uh, let's say this rope is pasted on the cone itself and the, if you look at the shape of, uh, of the rope also upon opening the cone that shape must be a straight line from p to p, p you're cutting through p so therefore p point and this p point must be uh, uh, at the same distance from the peak right because it's the same point right you have gone the full circle around and then you have come back to the same point so this point and this point must be at the same height okay and now my claim is between this the rope should look like a straight line why because if the rope is not straight then let's say then then the rope is loose it is not tight if the because uh, uh, see the climber uh, will attain the least possible potential energy and for attaining the least possible potential energy this rope must be straight why because if it is having some loose length then it he, the then it can always tighten by uh, going a little down okay because suppose uh, this P to P straight length is uh, less than this curved length then uh, we can always draw straight length below this point and that will reduce the potential energy of the mountain climbers that's one way of thinking about it or otherwise you can think that if there is tension then how can this rope be loose so it must be following a shortest path between uh, from P to P along the surface of the cone shortest possible path so if that part is clear then this problem becomes pretty easy okay so imagine cutting open the cone from the knot P, a cone can be cut into a planar figure and the rope should look like a straight line upon unwrapping because it is taut. If it is not a straight line, it can be tightened further by making it a straight line. Okay, so that if it is not a straight line, it the tension must be zero. Okay. Also, if the string is not straight, the hanging person can reduce its potential energy by lowering the loop further and tightening the string as I explained to you just now. Okay. Now what about the nearest distance of this uh, rope from the peak? In fact, the nearest distance, shortest distance will be just opposite to the knot. You see, uh, uh, this is the uh, lowest point and this is the uh, highest point. So this will be uh, just opposite and this distance can be found by drawing perpendicular, right? And you can see clearly that if beta keeps on increasing, then this perpendicular will keep on reducing, right? This perpendicular keep on reducing if you keep increasing beta. And if beta becomes 180 degree, what happens? It becomes a semicircle, and if it becomes a semicircle, then this perpendicular distance will go to zero, right? Because it will be passing through the apex itself, right? From P to P, because P has to be a point on, say, P has to be a point somewhere over here. So if it's a semicircle, then it goes uh, along the cut. So P has to lie on the cut, and this is 
let us say p dash this is also p dash then p p dash line will have to pass through the uh, apex of the cone that is the peak of the cone okay so uh, it can be readily seen that if beta becomes 180 degree this distance goes to zero and the loop will be at the verge of falling off the tip so when it becomes 180 degree what will happen this loop will be somewhere like this uh, I mean, it's not uh, to the scale, but it, the loop will be somewhat like this and it will be at the verge of sliding down. Okay, so beta cannot be more than 180 degree. And uh, you can also see that because uh, the, the loop, the string has to be tight. Uh, so if beta is greater than 180 degree, what would happen? It will, it would be impossible to have straight line entirely on the cone because the cut is, the cut line is this and P lies on the cut and straight line distance is this. So this is obviously not lying on the cone. The curves that lie on the cone are, uh, have to be this way okay? because this is the paper that's making the cone, I mean, the, upon the cut, okay. So, beta just cannot be more than 180 degree. If, if you understand that, then the rest of it becomes very simple, okay. So, now uh, I know that beta has to be uh, less than 180 degree. So, what's the corresponding constraint on alpha that I can work out using simple geometry? See, this is the circumference of the base of the cone and this... Uh, upon cutting this becomes a circumference so both these should be equal right so now what about this so if slant height of this cone is l then this is l beta and then if uh, this is the slant height then this vertical if you draw here this the radius becomes uh, l 2 l uh, rather l sine of alpha by 2 because this angle is alpha by 2 so this radius becomes l sine alpha by 2 and 2 pi r is the circumference so 2 pi l sine alpha by 2 is equal to l beta so that gives you l sine alpha by 2 is equal to beta by 2 pi and since beta is less than 180 degree that means what sine alpha by 2 must be less than pi upon 2 pi that is it should be less than 1 by 2 and that gives us alpha should be less than 30 degree uh, i mean alpha by 2 should be less than 30 degree because sine 30 is half and therefore alpha should be less than 60 degree okay so that was my analysis in fact i presented to you only a part of the problem this also a b part of the problem with the slightly different dynamics of the lasso i might take up the b part sometime later so but i hope uh, uh, the a part of the problem is clear and uh, this will also i mean a part is also will also give you insight into doing the b part uh, which i'll present sometime later i today i did not present that part of the problem and I hope you uh, enjoyed my analysis of the problem. If you enjoyed the analysis, uh, please do give a thumbs up to my video and please share uh, this video with as many uh, students as possible through WhatsApp, Telegram or whatever medium you, you might be using, maybe Discord or whatever you use for uh, networking with your fellow students who are preparing for JE. And most importantly, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video every day. And thanks a lot for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.